Ah, hey. Welcome back to our Everyday Struggle. I know you're not used to seeing my face in the whole seat, but uh, our lovely moderator in the desk is actually feeling under the weather. So I'm actually stepping in as a moderator today. Of course, I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Wayno. Lovely. And, <laughs> well, what's wrong? I can't call you lovely, bro. <laughs> and we do have a special guest, though. Yes, we do. Music mogul, a guy who's very outspoken, and my guy, too, Steve Stout. Thank you so much for having Steve, me. Steve, thank you for coming That's here. Really great, I, I got to give you a little fist bump. Yeah, yeah, you get yeah. me? Yeah, yeah, but you got like a cut on your yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to like keep it low key, okay, okay. man. All low right, key. I'm sorry, you don't have a cut on your head. <laughs> but, you know, while we're here, we might as well talk some hip hop, talk some topics. We know you got some stuff going on. We'll get into that. Yeah. Uh, but of course, we can't go anywhere without uh, giving an update on Nipsey Hussle. So, if you guys don't know, yesterday, uh, his suspected killer, Eric Holder, was actually taken into custody. Uh, the LAPD captured him while he was attempting to check himself into a mental health facility. And pretty much they gave an update on everything going on with the case. According to LAPD Chief Michael Moore, he said Mr. Holder walked up multiple on multiple occasions and engaged in a conversation with Nipsey and others that were there. He left and subsequently came back armed with a handgun and purposely and repeatedly fired, striking and killing Nipsey Hussle. Uh, we've seen a lot of people on social media, including his rumored fiance, uh, Lauren London, actually share their thoughts and actually send condolences. Um, what do you Sad. guys think about uh, the recent updates and the killer actually getting caught pretty much trying to turn himself in to a, uh, a mental health facility. I, I just think it's a sad, it, it was a sad day, it's a sad time. Um, you know, this man was giving back to his community openly and for that to happen to him in his own community, you know, it, it makes you think really hard about when you, you know, you, you leave the hood, you wanna go back to the hood, you wanna do good and then that happens and it only takes one guy. Yeah. It only takes one person to be jealous and, you know, want what you have right. and to do something like that to get a name. And um, is this one's going to be hard to overcome. But, you know, when you look at people who like him, who've done so much to give back and they die senselessly, I look at them as angels. Mm. They were they were here for a reason. And, you know, hopefully uh, the industry in that community does everything to push what he was doing yeah. forward. Um, I mean, for me, it's like now I'm, I'm, I'm training myself to, to think in having a marathon mindset, right? And, and that's why I'm waking up every day. Like to know Nipsey, if you knew him, you had a relationship with him. Anything you had, anything you had going on, he wanted to know how he could help. I mean, I'm happy that, you know, somebody's in custody because of this, because this is tragic. Like it's, it's a tragedy. Every day I'm seeing everybody that I knew, how, how more they knew him that I didn't even know they knew him. So, um, you know, it's very early, but we're going to be going through this for a while. You know, I was just prayers to him and his family at this point. Yeah, they, uh, TMZ also added yesterday that uh, he was actually in that neighborhood earlier that day trying to do a good deed for an uh, ex-con who he was hooking up with some new uh, gear and pretty much basically trying to give back. Do you think that in the future, like, other rappers will look at this or just other celebrities in general and be like, you know what, I'm going to kind of stay away after I've gained some success from where I've been? Well, that's what, where I came from. well. That's what people have done, yeah. right? That, that, that's that's actually what it happens. The fact that he decided to, with his success, in the midst of his success, stay in that community and support that community. He's a community activist. That's where he came from. Right. That's what he does. Um, look, I I think and I hope that this. And what he's done to, for his community, um, this is a profound moment where that block, that community, that area, um, they celebrate his life and his contribution. And that the industry, the LAPD, everybody acknowledges his contribution. And then again, it, it forces goodwill. It forces more goodwill rather than people going the opposite direction and saying, I'm never doing this. Mm. Or the community or that area or that block going in the wrong direction because of it. Right. Like that's, that's just the thing I don't want to happen. I want it to be sort of the benchmark of where we actually start going forward as a result of what he's done.
Mm. And speaking of celebrating and really exactly what you're saying, I mean, they started a petition yesterday that uh, gained like 214,000 signatures. The name to is rename The Block After Him. The yeah. Block After Him. Uh, what do you think, Wayno? I, I mean, I think that this, uh, again, it's still very early, but I think that's, you know, that's what should happen. Um, I, I think that uh, when people, what Crenshaw and Slauson was known for prior, and I'm talking about like, Corrupt had a line, if you think you boss him, bring your ass in over to Crenshaw and Slauson. That was on The Chronic, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, that was a place that you couldn't just go to. He turned it into a tourist attraction, almost. I mean, when I was in LA, I would visit that area by myself. Like, a lot of people were scared to go over there. Like, he kind of changed the, the narrative or changed the energy over there where people felt a little bit more welcome in the hood, so to speak. And he was changing a lot of those guys' mindsets where they knew, like, you know, you can't be on no BS over here no more. Like, we, 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 we're, we're fixing that. So I think that if a kid every day walks outside and sees Slauson Boulevard and Hustle Avenue, it's enough inspiration for them to, if they don't know the story, to go in and, and uh, do their history, do their knowledge, and want to push through. Because if they knew what, what that guy was doing for that neighborhood and what he just did for, man, I mean, he's affected so many people just beyond hip hop. I mean, like, did you think that the like tremendous outpour of like uh, just love for just him and his family, like even you see Russell Westbrook, like yeah. last night he played a game, very, uh, a very historic game, and pretty much he dedicated it to Nipsey. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I thought that that would happen. The thing is, is like for me, I had my own relationship with him, so it's like I know that he treated everybody fairly. Like I, I, not, I seen him, he not treat the, the the guy who's the janitor any different than the CEO. You know what I'm saying? So, me personally, I, I knew that it was gonna be a, a, a big like outpour, but just to see how many different people, I mean, Gary V. I heard Gary V was like very distraught about this because like he was building with Nipsey on so many different things and just to know like his mindset and what he was trying to make happen for his, his, his community. Like Steve said, like his community, 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 that's the biggest thing for him. He's a person of the people. You could, unfortunately, you could get close enough to touch him. You know what I mean? Whether you are a, a, a friend or a friend, like, because he was very welcoming. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, it's, it's great. Like, what Russell Westbrook did, the last person to do that was Wilt Chamberlain. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's historic, and he did it for him. You know what I mean? He came in there with that mindset. So I think that con continuously, like, he, he's just going to be something that we could always look to to push ourselves. Whenever you're feeling down, you could think about what he was trying to do, and you could do that within your own way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to keep you guys updated on uh, the latest uh, updates on this case and also, you know, continue to celebrate his life and, of course, his music. His music is going crazy, at least on iTunes. Apparently, he's going <clears> to <throat> uh, have a good week in sales, but still, that seems pretty minor at this point. But on to some other uh, news going on in hip-hop. Uh, unfortunately, we have to still cover other, other things, but uh, Lil Uzi Vert. We've been talking about this case for a minute, right? Uh, Uzi is unhappy in his his deal, and basically, a, according to uh, the Fader, there is a channel called Group Eyes, which is basically a Discord channel, and they uh, figured out that a couple Uzi songs were uh, for sale. They bought it for twelve hundred bucks each, and they're leaking songs since Uzi supposedly can't put out music. Well, Steve, I I'm interested to hear your thoughts on. Uzi situation. You're someone who now heads up United Masters. Uh, you're promoting a pretty much a different message than uh, just signing to a label like which is the yeah. normal route. Well, the, the, these are the things that happen. These are the trappings of, you know, you want to sign to a label, you want to get an advance, you want to feel like you got a record deal. This is what happens. You have a guy like Uzi who's talented as hell, and um, whether it's the record company or the production company. The fact of the matter is he doesn't control the outcome. And when you don't control the outcome, things like this happen on a regular basis. Um, and history tells us that. Um, so none of this shocks me. I've seen this movie before. Um, and it's sad because, you know, this guy is a super talented guy. You know, a lyricist, you know, a singer, writer. Um, could dance and he got, he got the whole thing, his swag, he got the whole thing. And time is just elapsing in the prime of his life as an, as an artist because of the labyrinth agreements that record companies and production companies and just the ecosystem of a music label has. So is the ecosystem 
just broken or is it artists not having any education prior to doing these deals? Like what? You go, listen, it's predatory. If you're going to somebody when they're 17, 18 years old and they ain't got shit and you give them some money and a contract, they sign it. Yeah, like <laughs> six, six, six months to a year after <clears throat> pretty much he dropped his first album, he, we saw him on Twitter sporadically saying, hey, young artists, you guys shouldn't have signed. You shouldn't have signed. I, I mean, I look at it like this, right? So why, if I'm a young artist coming out of the hood, right? I don't have anything. Music is my way out. Yeah. Um, I'm offered a million, two million dollars. Yeah. Right? Why would I, like, why would I turn that down? Now, of course, we see what we're talking about with Uzi, but why would you turn it down? Well, he wasn't offered one, two million dollars coming out the gate, first of all. And second of all, if you believe in yourself, you gotta, under, you gotta play the long game. When I first, give you guys a quick story. Um, I was working at uh, well, my agency, I was representing Reebok, and we was trying to sign LeBron back in 2004, whatever, when he first came into the league. And everybody wanted to give him sneaker deals. Everybody, it was always $120 million was what it's gonna take to sign this young phenomenon, LeBron James. He went to visit Adidas, Reebok, and Nike. Reebok was seeing him first. This guy came in on the plane, left, left Akron, came in on the plane, 17 years old, living in a fucking box. We offered him $10 million that night. $10 million, don't take another meeting. If, the money, if, you, if you're visiting us, that means you want to do business with us. Mm -hmm. That's a possibility. We'll pay you the 120, no negotiation, and give you another 10 to not meet anybody else. The check is right in front of you. He did not take the $10 million, got back on the plane, and went to home the next, the next day, 17 years old. Right mm -hmm. now, it's LeBron, right? He's made a lifetime billion-dollar deal with Nike and all this today. But he believed in himself back then. You think it was him, or maybe like no, it was mom. him. I was in the room. I was in the room. It was him. When you believe in yourself, it's it's about believing in yourself. If you believe in if you believe in your talent early enough, you're not gonna take some check that's gonna basically mortgage the next ten years of your life because you got instant gratification. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing I told Chopper when we signed him. Record companies are offering you $3 million on signing. You're going to take that money right now? You're going to just give away the next 10 years of your life? You're 16 years old right now for $3 million? Or you want to stay independent and control your destiny? Yeah. So you don't have to have these stories. So um, I was having a conversation with Jay one time, and he was telling me about how, like... Ho? Yeah. The... the <clears throat> uh, the advance is like the carrot that they dangle in front of you, right? But on the back end, they're not telling you all the money that you're missing out on. So it's like that big advance that you take up front, you have to sacrifice so much on the back end, right? And that's just, that's what music. So we was talking about LeBron as well. I wanted to know what you think like a Zion Williamson should do right now at this point. Because he's about to, like, you know, he's gonna be the number one pick. He's a going phenom. Into NBA. He's a phenom. He's, yeah. Like, he's going to get all types of offers, and he's probably going to get something bigger than, because LeBron got a, a $90 million contract from Nike in 2003. So he's probably going to get a deal larger than or a deal we've never seen before. What, what decision do you think he should make? Like, I think he should go with the, the take the most money, get the most money he can. I mean, look, there's two options. Take as much money as you can, mm -hmm. right, and get as much upside as you can in that deal. So you get an advance or whatever it is, and you get as much upside as you can and you know, equity in the company or a big percentage of sales. Or start your own brand, right? And and not take any money at all. I wouldn't I wouldn't do the latter, but I would I would do the former. I would uh, if I was him, I'd take as much money as I could up front mm -hmm. from the company that he feels the most comfortable with, not just any company, not not like a company he wouldn't wear their shoes anyway, right? Right, and then get a percentage of the business um, or equity in the company overall. I mean, that's what I would do if I was him. But now we see like Big Baller Brand. You see what's happening with Big Baller Brand was like Lonzo is like detaching himself from Big Baller Brand. He's going to a different well, route. They had a corrupt guy. They had a guy apparently who was doing funny business yeah. behind it. That's the whole thing. And look, 
I say this all the time. If you're not a really an entrepreneur, like it sounds really sexy to be start your own business, be an entrepreneur. That sounds really cool. But if you're not, don't do that because things like this will happen to you. You'll make really poor decisions and it could screw everything up. And I think that was obviously the case with um, the big baller brand. It was a good idea. Mm -hmm. It was a very bold idea. Um, but, you know, they were not obviously in position to put the people in place or didn't take the time to put the people in place to run that business correctly. Well, well, my so, so like, I'm, I'm, but I'm thinking with Uzi because I think there's another way of thinking too, right? So I know, like, yeah, he's, he's unhappy and everything. But I look back, I look now and I look back at his career and I say, would he have been Uzi now if he didn't sign? Like, Why? I mean, would would the Uzi back then when he signed was a completely different artist. His style was different. I mean, um, he wasn't being marketed like how he is. I mean, of course, Atlantic and Generation Now helped him along the way somehow, right? So, like, a lot of times, even though you would want to preach independence to a lot of artists, a lot of artists can't handle that, or they wouldn't they wouldn't live up to their full potential. Just like you're saying with um, being an it, entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah, being an entrepreneur. It sounds good, but then some people, not everyone could be Chance. Like, what do you what do you say to a kid who he's interested in being? Uh, I think look, listen, I look at the base level. If you put your music out and you got Instagram and social media, that's the new MTV. And you got Spotify and Apple, that's the new radio slash music store. Mm -hmm. It's how you handle that promotion yourself. It's like you can put out music when you feel like it. You can promote your music when you feel like it. You can build an audience and convert that audience to stream your songs. I'm not saying that they're not functions that shouldn't be provided, like press and promotion and things like that. I'm not saying get rid of that. The point that I'm making is don't give away or sign your life away for it. It ain't worth that. Right. That's, the, that's the whole point. It's not worth that. That's why companies like ours, uh, United Masters, they are companies that are uh, out there that you can actually get promotion, get distribution without having to sign your life away to get that done. So I'm not shitting on the service. I'm shitting on the fact on what it costs. So how, I, I want to know because I, like I've done I've done major deals and I've done independent deals and like what I've noticed with like certain independent deals that I've done, it was kind of like some some of the same terms but just le less lesser percentages being taken. So I want to same know, terms as a record company, yeah, as, as a traditional label. Yeah, yeah. As, same terms almost as a traditional label, but it's just like lesser percentages. So it's like, all right, we I did a, 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 a independent deal before. We own fifty percent with the company, but we didn't have a high advance and we didn't get as much promotion. So we were left with like the artist I was managing at the time. We were left with a lot of the heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. There was no video budget, so we had to improvise and find ways to do our own videos. Like with United Masters, if if how does a kid say, all right, I want to sign here? Like, I want to know how, like, what's the business model? Because how do you monetize on the back end if they just own everything or they own, is it a split? Yeah, it's a split. We're we do 90-10 splits. Oh. The artist gets 90, we get 10. We distribute the artist. If you want, now, if you want f further services, the percentage goes up 20%, 25%, 30%. It, it'll go up. But it does not ever take away the fact that you own the right or that you could leave. And I think that's a very important aspect of it. Um, everybody has to make money, right. but nobody should own your intellectual property just because they gave you an advance. Mm. That's not right. I just don't think it's fair. I think it's usury. I think it's taking advantage. You know, if it was a loan, right, mm -hmm. it would be illegal <laughs> if it was right. a loan. Absolutely. But it's not a loan. They just own it, right? You're 18, you give it away for X amount of millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars, whatever it is. We all know it's not, a, everybody says a million dollars, it's not a million dollars. It's not here at all. It's not, it's just all propaganda. And you you, 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 you sort of give it away, man, and that, that's just not cool. The tools that are available today were not available for you back then, what you're talking about, right? Yeah. The cost to shoot a video was high. You didn't have the equipment, the ability to shoot a video right now it's costing guys. Chopper shot his first video for $150. He shot Shot Flow for $150. Right. That's what these things cost. It's not this big, expensive uh, deal in order to light it and shoot it like it used to be five, six years ago. Technology has helped fix that. Take advantage of those technology, those turns in technology, and don't sign your rights away um, just because 
you know, you you want to be hot or get the check right at the moment. You feel the same way about publishing deals as well? That's even worse. Yeah. As, uh, Steve, so That's like, even worse. Have somebody administer your publishing. Publishing is difficult um, from a standpoint, collecting all the money, right? You almost, you need someone to do that for you. It's a very important to have, because there's so much different pockets in which the money comes in, that having somebody who's knowledgeable un and understand those pockets, collect that on your behalf, um, uh, is important. I would say it's, I would say it's important, not necessary, but important. But you can just sign an administration deal yeah, and do that. Deal, right. Yeah, you don't have to sign away half of your rights, half of your thoughts, what's in your head, your God-given talent, just to get the check up front. You're going to get in it. They're only paying you with your own money. Now, if you're betting against yourself, if you're like, I'm really trash, <laughs> I can't believe they're about to give me some money right now. I'm trash. <laughs> but if you believe in yourself and you believe that you have the potential to be somebody, do not take that advance. Do not sign those rights away. So, so like, again, for a young artists, I think maybe perhaps they don't mean to uh, sign their rights away. But again, I know you said, for example, Chopper, right? You said yeah. his first video cost 150 But you start ramping things up as you start becoming a big artist. I see him on Instagram. He, he, he say he has a sprinter worth 100000 he's, he's making so, money. Because he's but, but still, you might still need a loan. You might still need an advance to cover some of the stuff. Bro, you have he's to getting, cover. he's, he's first of all, he's getting show money. People are booking him. He he he's going on tour. He invested and bought a Sprinter so he can go around on tour, right? Like th that's what you should do. But before you get to that point where you're making money, you actually have to invest. You're not gonna get by just like, oh, I did a video for 150 or, you know, like for example, you're trying to get on, um, you're trying to get one of your records really promoted and worked. You get me? It's gonna cost some money. Now, if you're a kid- Worked on, like on what? On Spotify and Apple? I mean, or even if you're trying to, trying to send it on the radio, it doesn't matter. You know, like it's gonna cost money pretty much, right? You might need a loan, right? Uh, like in that case, where you're not self-funded and you need someone to put some money behind it, yeah. I think I think a lot of times young artists look at that way and say, "Yo, I need money to keep this going," and they sign. So if that's in, not a loan, then, but that's the problem is that's not a loan. A loan is a loan. Owning is not a loan. You're signing yourself to a record company that's not a loan. What about like a distro deal? Like th there, that, this is what I'm saying. A distribute. If somebody's going to give you an advance in a distribution deal, mm -hmm. that's a way better opportunity. Okay. That that is that falls. That starts to look like a loan, depending on the agreement. But if you're going to sign your rights away, where they own your masters, you don't own your masters. That's not a loan. And the other thing that's very important is, um, and you're starting to see this artist. Uh, the whole independent thing is working, right? You're starting to see artists say, I want to be independent. I want to own my rights. I think it's important. Cool. Caroline Records, ADA, The Orchard, they're not independents. They're owned by Sony, Warner Brothers, and Universal. They're basically farm systems so that they can sign you. They're not independent labels. The independents, United Masters, STEM, uh, TuneCore, DistroKid, Empire, those are independents. So do you, you think um, with the stuff that you're doing, is it gonna change? Like, Cause now I see a lot of like record labels trying to give more favorable deals. Like, yeah. you know, try to do like 50-50 ventures with the yeah. artists. Well, not just ventures, but try to do like 50-50 splits with the artists, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Do you think that uh, one day is gonna fully turn around where well, artists could walk in there without having all the leverage and it's just the right thing to do is to give them more more um, ownership of their IP? I, I, I hope so. You know what? That's the goal. That is certainly the goal. This thing, th 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 these record company contracts, are it's a legacy thing. You know, there was a period in time where everybody wanted fame and they took that check. They wanted to be famous. Um, they didn't believe they, that they needed this machine to do it. And, you know, those agreements and those circumstances are not the circumstances of today. Back then, you know, whether it was vinyl, which is a very expensive process, mm -hmm. or it was shipping it, getting it in record stores, 
even with CDs, printing it, pressing it, getting it, shipping it, distributing it. That process, one could say, man, I don't know how to do all of that. Right. That, that. There's a lot of stuff. I need the machine to do that. So therefore, I'm gonna try to best de the, get the best deal I can with, the, with that machine. What? However, that's not the circumstance today. Right. That is not, that is, if that was the circumstance today, I would understand why the deals would start to look not as usury as they once were, but a little but 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 I would understand why uh, record companies would have that leverage. They don't have the leverage anymore. They don't you don't need them for distribution. You don't need them in order to shoot a video. You don't need them to post the music. So why would you give away all that leverage just because of one check at one time? Right. So you said, like, of course, everybody has to make money and everything. Um, and you do like it, de depending on the split is depending on what the artist wants to ne what they need. Mm -hmm. Now you're a branding guy, so my question is, with ancillary, is it the same thing with ancillary? Like, do do you give these guys like deals coming in? Because I mean, just being affiliated with you could get a, a kid all types of endorsements, yeah. etc. Yeah, I was mm -hmm. thinking the same. Like, like I, I mean, even just like to lump it in. Like, what do you think about like even 360 deals that are given out? <laughs> Come on, man. 360 deals? They don't even have 360 services. Yeah, well, I was, my, my question <laughs> How you gonna give somebody a 360 yeah, deal? Yeah, but, but, but like, usually the thought is you're pushing the brand and the brand, you're getting those ancillary incomes because yeah, but it's of the not brand even, that's being pushed through. That's just crazy. The 360 deal was invented when record companies, when record sales started going like this, the record company said, the only way I can make money, since I'm not, since I'm not you, since I'm not making as much money as I used to, mm. by taking owning the master, what I'm going to start doing is going. Hmm. Let me get some of that torn money. Let me get some of that. You got a commercial with blah 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 money. That's not that they were doing that service at all. They don't have a torn a touring department or a merchandise department or whatever. They just want to get a way. To, it was a way to capture revenue because they weren't selling as much records as they used to when the digital shit took off. That's not because they were actually doing the service that was 360 and somebody made that up. Like, that, that's even worse. You're not supposed to be signing, giving away 360 rights. For what? That's like me saying to you right now, yo, you're a talented, you're a talented dude, you're a talented dude. Here's, here's a check for $2 million. Give me 50% of the, everything you do for the rest of your life. You couldn't even imagine that thought. You couldn't even imagine that thought. Right. Somebody just giving you money, buying, Yo, whatever you do, now you got the next, you write the next, get out. You blow up and you do your video game, Twitch shit, crazy shit, and now somebody's, te you're tethered to somebody for the rest of your life as a result of that? Yeah, I think 50, I think anybody asking for 50% of anything is ridiculous. Like, I, I, I really believe that. Like, even for myself doing a management deal, <laughs> like, I would never, I, even production deals, I would never tell a kid they have to give me 50% of anything because I could put them in a room. I think that that's really unfair. But I, that's why I was asking on the branding side because you are providing a service. Yeah. You like you push a T road. I'm loving it. You know what I mean? Like all of these different things that you've <laughs> been a part of, yeah. where you can make a major thing happen. That's so, right. So how how does the, does that work on that side? Because well, that's the reason why. Look, I think that's the big difference between United Masses and all the other uh, independent distributors out there and record companies is that. Because we have an advertising agency and we represent all these brands, yeah. we have that opportunity to help you right. put your music in places. We signed a deal with the NBA. The, our music is actually that comes through United Masters is featured in the NBA, whether it be in games or their 1.5 billion social media uh, impressions that they got. Like we're, we're supplying the music for that. So you're a new artist and you're getting that opportunity without signing your life away. I think those are very important advances in helping these artists retain their rights, get their music exposed, um, and get an, a better opportunity to become the best of who they are without having these regrets down the line. But isn't that uh, kind of a risk on the company side? So like you, you help them get in NBA content, you might help them secure other branded deals and everything, right? And you know, it's something where they could leave at any time. Right. Yeah. Say after a, a couple of years, they're gaining some traction. They've been distributed independently with United Masters. Now they're like, screw I wanna it. Leave. I want to go. I want to go get the check here. I already got like a good. Uh, I'm on a good path already. Yeah. Like, doesn't business wise, isn't that a risk? I I think when you do the right thing, 
people don't tend to go anywhere. Uh, I will tell you, well. That's tough, though. Yeah, well, I'm not, listen, I'm you not. You know a lot of these artists are, are dickheads. Like, like, let, let, let uh, listen, a lot like, of them are dickheads. <laughs> I, I happen to know that or believe that if you do the right thing, I'm not going to be out the money, right? It's not like I'm taking, I'm not taking huge financial risk. So they're leaving with my money. So like they're gone. But if I help somebody become a more of what they already are going to be and they decide they want to leave, what am I supposed to do? Yeah, I feel you on that. <laughs> you, know how you think I want to ever be in, listen, me personally, I don't want myself or my company in a situation that drama and canon are with, with Uzi right now, where somebody's every single day calling you this, that, and the third. But Make, it was money on the line, though. Like, again, even though you want to do the right thing, like, and I'm pretty sure, like, for all the headache, if it was just as simple as just go, but there's probably tens of millions of dollars in revenue that if they just let him walk out the door, yeah, you won't get called names. No, 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 no. no. I'm, I'm not saying they should let him. I'm not saying they should let him walk out. I don't even know what the business dealings are. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying the circumstance that they're in yeah, yeah. is because there was an advance and it was a promise. And the advance and the promise at one point made sense, and at this point doesn't make any sense to somebody. And I just believe that those, th those circumstances, when you start, when you don't manage your expectations, and I start putting all this money in you, and I'm like, now you owe me for the rest of the 10 years, five years, you look up and you go, what the fuck did you do for me? Why did I sign that? I don't think that that's the right thing. I, I, I just... I mean, but I, I think, I think, I mean, I, I feel you, but also we giving a lot of artists a lot of credit and a lot of, a, a lot of artists do a lot of fuck shit and bullshit and there are people, I'm not speaking specifically on drama and canon because I'm taking myself out of being their friends. You know, I'm taking myself out of being their friends and that situation as a whole, but there are many instances where you put yourself on the line for artists and you help build them up and eventually they just get tired of you making money. Or they or they or they're counting your pockets. You know what I mean? Like they're counting your pockets. And when you when when there was nothing there and you were putting yourself on the line and giving me resources, none of that matters anymore because now they done got over the bridge. You know what I mean? So so I think it, it, it does go 50-50 in a lot of ways because you're right, artists your own, they IP. I, I totally agree with with that. I'm, yeah. I'm a art I'm a person who manages artists, I sign them production deals, they share on their IP. I feel like I should get paid by what I contribute. Yes, but right. sometimes when you you can be contributing and then the person feels like, well, I'm done with the situation. Like, I don't really like, like, and, and then don't honor the agreement that they signed initially. And, and that's an, a, a, part of the, a part of the game that, because the artist is popular, the fans never get to see how bullshit, the bullshit that they do. You know, so everybody else gets the you thing definitely had an at them. You definitely had an experience. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. you definitely had an experience. Absolutely. And, and, and that's why I'm saying this because you, you'll, you'll be put in a position where people start looking at you funny and you'll be like, damn, what the fuck did I do? Other mm -hmm. than and give my all. You know, and I think a, a lot of the artists don't get the flack for it because they're the popular one. Or, that, is, you know? that, 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 that is true. Um, and that's, that's just dealing with bullshit people, no matter whether, whether it's an artist or an executive. That, that's just bullshit people. Right. Right, like that that's not limited to just being an artist. You could have that hair <laughs> complex. That shit could happen anywhere. My whole point about United Masses is specifically that artists should own their rights and that you should your contribution to their career should not mean that you own their rights as a result of it. Mm. That's the most important part of it. Record companies have been built by owning masters. They take those masters and then they license those masters to Google and Apple and Facebook and get billions of dollars for licensing it. Yeah. If the artist owned it, they, they would not have the opportunity to just take it and license it. That's the business that they're in. I believe that if artists own their masters, they could start doing direct deals down the line and not have to be subject to record company politics, right. bullshit, and... Uh, giving their rights away for mere whatever it is up front. That's just not the move anymore. Mm. We as people, we as people should be in control of our outcomes, control our destiny, and not be reliant on somebody else to control our destiny. So if, say, for example, Chopper, you guys have been pushing him, promoting him. If he, if he takes his whole catalog yeah. tomorrow and, and, and says, Steve, it's been good here, but I gotta go take this check. 
and he's and he brings everything to someone else, um, or, or to a label. He's a signed yeah. label. Don't you you wouldn't feel like you took a loss? I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't like that. I, I don't think that that would be smart for him to take his rights, take the shit that he owns right now, being a sixteen year old entrepreneur, and go sign it away because um, because of a check when he's earning money right now and he has and he's he's starting to get the sense. And feel what ownership looks like. It's like if you're an entrepreneur and you're doing well, why would you go take a job? <laughs> nah, I feel you. Man. Why would you do that? Like, it wouldn't make any sense. But so would I be upset if he made a bad decision? Yes. But you know, he's not the only. By the way, he's not the only one. When you look at what we're doing, like we talk about chopping. Look at Neek Bucks. You know, Neek. Homie, yeah, that's the homie. The, taking off. You don't. You don't feel it. Absolutely. No. You, listen, you, I've been watching Neek for the past few years and. What I will say is that um, Nick has been going, I mean, he's before I've been watching him like trying to kind of hit the mainstream, and this is like maybe four years ago, since he's gotten with y'all, I've seen a, a, a new direction in his path. Like, and I always tell him like he's he's going the right route. He looks fantastic. Absolutely. Looks I'm so proud of that guy. Nick Bucks, I'm so proud of him. Like, this guy's building and building and building. He owns his right. He put out his EP. He got the joint energy right now. Like, you see him building. Yeah. And um, he's getting love from athletes. He's getting love. He's building his base. Like, that's what it's all about. Like, you got to grind, man. That's, I don't give a fuck. You go back in time. You look at what Puff did. You remember what they was going on back then? Guys walking around, street teams, yeah. right? Putting posters everywhere, building, building, building a fan base. Like, this is what it's all about anyway. You got to do the work anyway. Right. It's not like you go to record deal oh, yeah, yeah. and no, you no, sit no, back and they do yeah. the work. Yeah, they they ne- they, they, that never happens. Right. So if, you, if you're going to do the work anyway, why wouldn't you fucking own it? Do you think that uh, just music education is just lacking? Like, uh, of course, some people get it now more than before. But, like, you know, I, I was hearing you kind of explain that, which I think a lot of people didn't know. Uh, the whole thing about the masters, uh, how it's written in the record contract. Uh, you have a you ever seen that before? Every copy. You've seen the word, you know, see, you've seen slaves. Yes, I've seen it. You've I've, seen the word slaves in a contract. I've seen it in and throughout the universe. Like, I've seen all types of yes. shit. <laughs> so if we go yeah, to yeah. Mars and start selling Yeah, 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 like, yeah no. <laughs> they, It'd be shit like that in there. Yeah. yeah. Like, literally, the word slaves, yeah. the universe. Yeah. You see Kanye shit, they said he can't retire. Yeah. I mean, it's the wildest thing because to write an agreement to basically say I own your thoughts for forever or 10 years or whatever the term is it's very hard to write that so you start writing shit like universe and you know <laughs> duplicate like you start writing all kind of shit yeah. because I got to write every single possible circumstance right. to make sure you can't leave there was a time you look at it that's why Prince changed his name to the artist formerly known as. Right. God bless the dead. Uh, Lisa Left Eye Lopez from TLC, she came out as an artist. She also changed her name. Right. I remember uh, that. Yeah. People start changing their names. So I think it do different shit. <laughs> no, because they think, like, if you write the contract this way, yeah. but I'm no longer that person, that person yeah, then got... I'm not in that agreement anymore. Right. It's just me shit. Why, what the fuck is that? Right. You got to start doing shit like that. Come wow. on, man. You focusing on that rather than focusing on your art? How the fuck are we going to be successful doing that? You're an artist. You're a great mind. My job as an executive is to make sure you have the best circumstances possible mm-hmm. to be the best you can be. Right? You guys, this show. The, the green room, the thing, you good, you good, you good, you good, everybody's good. Great. Perfect. Do the best you can. That's your job. I can't have you thinking about changing your name and doing all. I'm not academics anymore because I don't like the fucking agreement. And (laughs) now you come out here, you a new name. What the fuck would your name be? (laughs) What would my name be? What would your name be? You have to change your name. That shit is corny. Like, do the work, go through the process, um, own your shit, build your business, get exactly what you deserve. I want to know, um, of course, why we have you here, man, because you're, you're a sports guy um, and you deal a lot with sports. What can we do to change this NCAA shit? Because I feel like the NCAA is one of the most corrupt Did you know, I was teams. just, I don't know when this show is airing. Uh, today. I, 
Okay, cool. Like two hours. Yeah. Again, I was just at Congress yesterday. Mm -hmm. I was on Capitol Hill yesterday with congressmen fighting. They put a bill forth, and you they, they put a bill forward mm -hmm. about the NCAA and not paying college athletes. Mm -hmm. Myself, Maverick Carter, and LeBron James did a documentary right. on this called Student Athlete. That is, you know what? That's worse than the record business. It's the, it's the worst shit I've it's ever the, seen it's, it's in slavery. my life. Yeah, it's, it's the slavery. worst thing I've ever seen. You got a guy like Zion Williams. There's, an, there's, there's circumstances where you have a guy like that popular, and his parents can't even afford to go see his games. Right. And and he can't. He can't purchase. Nobody can purchase a ticket. Right. Wait. Do you know the, the bagel thing? So how, if you're uh, if you're an NCAA athlete, and you can have a bagel, right? But if they provide you like if somebody provides you a cream cheese for a bagel, that can make you ineligible for your scholarship because a with cream cheese on a bagel is now considered a meal. Seriously, like that. That's. <laughs> It's ridiculous. No, bro, like, you ridiculous. can't sell your jersey. Yeah, you can't sell your own jersey. You can't sell your own jersey. I, I asked Kimba. No, you can't sell. No, I'm not talking right. about. I'm not talking about making duplicates. I'm talking about the one that the one you, you got. Have, yeah. No, I asked Kimba for his jersey one time. You can't sell your fucking jersey. How about this? The coach gets paid millions of dollars from right. Nike to make sure you wear the sneakers. Right. The coach gets the money. Coach gets a salary. Right. Five million, ten million, two million, whatever his salary is. Gets another five million from Nike to make sure all of y'all motherfuckers wear Nikes. Right. They do that in high school. Absolutely. They do it in AAU now. No, they're doing it now. It's, it's criminal. AAU. It's the only form of slavery that exists. Well, no. <laughs> no. Let me pull that back. Right. In a first world nation, it's slavery in plain sight. And nobody says shit because they made up this law called student athlete. These guys aren't student athletes. They're not going to. They're fucking athletes. Yeah, exactly. They're athletes. And it's even more corrupt because football and basketball are the only two sports which you have to actually stay a minimum time in order to go professional. Right. You don't have to do that in baseball. You don't have to do that in tennis. You don't have to do that in swimming. But football and basketball, the biggest revenue driving sports, you have to stay one year in basketball, three years in football, minimum. And that's guaranteed that the college can get that TV money. Right. Uh, how would you fix that business? You got to pay the athletes. You got to pay them. <laughs> they gotta get and whether you give them the money now or you put the money in escrow, you got to pay the athletes. And the other thing that's important is these guys can't be going to these schools and not getting an education. When I was coming up, I'd watch, uh, like, University of Miami and Florida State, and you'd be looking, the players come on the screen, hi, I'm Deion Sanders, I'm this. And then you look at the bottom, and you'll see their, uh, their majors. They'd put it on the bottom of the thing, parks and recreation, uh, 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 physical education, like, just any fucking thing, anything to qualify to be a student. Yeah. They, they don't care about these guys' education. Excuse yeah. absence, excuse absence, excuse absence. They got games, they're flying all over the country. They're not playing just yeah, reasonable they games. Be, they're yeah. like, studying. They're, they're not student athletes. These guys are full-blown athletes, bringing in billions of dollars, not getting shit. It's the same philosophy why I even did that documentary. It's the same premise on why I started United Masters. I don't think that things should be unequitable, period. It's not right. It's just not right. You should actually learn something from these tech companies. Transparency is key. Transparency is important. You go on YouTube, you go on um, Instagram, you see how many followers you got. You go on YouTube, you can see how much money you earn. It's like transparency. With United Masters, we make it very clear. This dashboard, this is how much money you made, this is how much money we got, this is how much money you got. Why can't you do good while doing good? The, N the NCAA, if they pay the athletes, they'll still be killing it. Yeah. Why don't you, you mean their families can't afford to see their kid play yeah. because they don't have any money? They grew up in Liberty City. They're fucked up. Yeah. Their kid's a great athlete. Their kid goes to college. Their kid's flying all over the place, to, uh, making billions of dollars, making the school super famous, helping the school recruit the next generation athlete and their parents can't afford to see them play, mm. and you can't buy them a plane ticket? Yeah. You know what that leads to? 
Corruption. Absolutely. Corruption. What happens? Boosters come in. Independent guys, future agents, giving 16-year-old kids, families, $150,000, a brown, not even, $40,000 in a brown bag, telling the kid, yo, when you go pro in two years, you're with me. <laughs> Bet. These are all the things that are happening as a result of these laws. Right. Change these laws so that nobody has to do all this crazy, corrupt shit and give these kids an education. Mm. And that, hap- that, that should be college sports, and that should also be the music business. Help these kids learn the business so at least they're making these decisions wide open. Now, I don't think that guys that work in the record companies are fucked up. There's a lot of guys that I know that are friends of mine uh, that work in record companies. And I, I don't want to get that, I don't want that to be mistaken. They took a job at a place where that was the legacy industry. That's what they do. Those are the contracts that they built those buildings off of. Those are the contracts that they've made humongous salaries off of. Those are the contracts that it's the business model that they are in. They happen to have a job there. I don't want that to ever be mistaken that the record business means that all the people that work in the record company are shit. I'm talking about the traditional label system is built off of a system that is no longer applicable to the artist today. You don't need those services the same way you needed them 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you gotta come at me much differently. And much differently means allowing me to own my shit. You wanna license it? Cool. I own my masses. Not when I get successful out the gate. When you see Taylor Swift or, uh, Taylor Swift stays at Universal. You know what they do? Taylor Swift didn't own her shit, her contract's up, then they tell you, stay with us, and we'll give you back the first one. Mm. Stay with us longer, we'll give you back. So nobody leaves, because now they're doing the extra bid in order to get the shit they should have gotten the beginning back. That's, that's just crazy to me. They're staying longer to get what they gotta get back. That's not, that's, that's not cool. That's not why they should be staying. They should have got that out the gate. Mm. So, so, um, like just even speaking about distribution companies, because you know, uh, United Master, you know, there, there are a bunch of artists who start out like uh, distributing via like TuneCore or yeah. like a distro kit. Yeah. And they might be looking at it, right? Uh, you with United Masters and saying, well, with them, they charge me like a fee of like, what is it, like 50 bucks, 100 bucks to yeah. get a song out or an album out. Like you guys are talking percentage. And if, if, you're, if you're then saying I should, uh, even though you're not owning their stuff, I don't know if I want to give you against the Uzi thing. I don't, 10% seems like nothing when there's not that much money, but you never know. It gets to be a lot of money, they're like, I would have rather just paid the one-time fee. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah. how, how do you make that make sense to no, someone who's, I, who's thinking about yeah, investing with I, Listen, if you want to go to my earlier point, we have an advertising agency, we have services. We're helping these kids. When you look at Anik Bucks, you look, there's an artist, we have Toby Nagawi. Dope. These artists are not only getting their music distributed, but they're also getting opportunities as a result of the partnership they have with United Masses. For that, um, I expect to make money on that, right? So whether it's 10% or 20%, whatever it is, I'm saying that that's worth it to me. Or it's not worth it to you, whatever whatever that case is. If you want to go to a to an to a distributor where you just pay a flat fee and put your music up and there's no one to call, (laughs) there's no one to deal with, you know, fine, go do that. But if you actually wanna go and get distribution and get quality service, where guys are trying their best to put your music out and get you circumstances so that you can cut through. There's 150,000 songs being uploaded a day. 150,000 songs a day. You wanna play the lottery? or you want to actually get a shot to yeah. get your music out there yeah. and you actually cut through. So that's just the difference. I understand that question. And um, like I said, there's different there's subscription models like that, or there's, a, or there's a model where you don't put up the money up front. Like, I don't want to pay $50. You know why? I don't have $50. Or I have $50, but I'd much rather invest in my music video so I want to do a deal with United Masters. I can. I'd, I'd prefer to give a small percentage of my earnings versus putting fifty dollars in 
suppose nothing happens. It's just a, it's just a style. It's just, a, it's just an option. Gotcha. That's all. I get it. I get it. I get it. Uh, I mean, I wish. I love could. all these types of questions. I like talking <laughs> yeah. about of all this. Of course, you got to challenge you a little bit, man. Yeah. I mean, I wish we could sit here and talk for like another. Two we hours actually can. I, it don't think, even matter. I, I, I think there's that, nobody coming up behind me. <laughs> I we got to make it on time today. Yeah, we got we got to get yeah. it up, uploaded on time. Yeah. I think the music education is the dopest part. That you know, I think most fans when they watch this show. Or they look deeper than just like the tabloidy type of stuff. Like they want to learn about the music business because they don't know. And now it's becoming a little bit more transparent. So when you have uh, minds like yours that share information, they start looking at things much differently. I got it. Look, I, I've seen a lot of artists, a lot of people go to look, they follow United Masses and they've learned a lot. Like I, I've, we've gotten a lot of traction on the education part. And that's probably something that I may end up doing is going on the road and providing a, a master class mm. on, in different cities on, on, on the music business. Um, yeah, a lot of people don't even know the difference between like royalties, just, for, just straight royalties publishing, versus publishing. Yeah. So, you know, I, it, it's all, all that seems to a regular fan or a starting independent artist as just like just mumbo jumbo. I think that's why you see some of the same stuff happen. But uh, Steve, listen, I wish we could stay here for much longer. I think me and you, we, we'll probably do some other stuff. I like how he wraps uh, it up. <laughs> Your wrap-up game got to get tighter. Come on, man. I know. I know. This is my you, first time. Yeah, shit. That's got to miss you, girl. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, listen, I, I forgot how she wraps, even wraps the show. Uh, but I want you guys to go check out Steve's United Masters, everything he got going on. That's right. Uh, you guys can tune in back tomorrow for Everyday Show. I appreciate and everything I you're rate. doing. I appreciate everything you're doing. Thank you. You guys are pushing the culture forward. That shit is dope. Um, and as long as we keep teaching and give our... Uh, 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 our culture, the platform to shine and allow everybody to partake in it and be a part of it, then you know what? We'll be helping each other out and we'll actually be pushing um, everybody's dreams forward and being optimistic about what tomorrow means for all of us people. Exactly. And on that note, black folks, yeah, I'll black see you excellence. Guys tomorrow. Hopefully the desk is back right. and I'm back in my regular <laughs> seat because it's a little bit tougher than I thought.